All right, uh, good evening everyone. Sorry for the brief delay. This is the uh, March 24, 2021 meeting of the York and Conservation Commission. My name is Michael Garland, I'm chairman of the commission. Uh, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Tom Fallon. Present. Michelle Colross. Present. Uh, Allison Holmes. Present. Nathan Rant. Present. Tony Romneyu. Tony Romney. And Patrick Cunningham. Present. All right. And we also have town officials and employees who are participating this evening. Uh, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Building Commissioner Caleb Moody. Here. And um, land use clerk. Land use clerk. Um, and and um, whatever. <laughs> I was trying to go with something pithy and I couldn't. I <laughs> All right. But in all seriousness, uh, good evening, everyone. This uh, meeting of the Urban Conservation Commission uh, is now called call to order at approximately 7.04 p.m. Uh, this meeting is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the, uh, the ongoing state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Furthermore, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. Uh, the order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting on the town's website, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Uh, for this meeting, um, the Conservation Commission is convening by remote participation for the public only, although uh, some staff may be physically located in the planning uh, board meeting room in Town Hall. Those town employees are practicing social distancing in accordance with the governor's orders. <clears throat> so for the public to join the meeting remotely by telephone, call 1-408 dash six five oh dash three one two three and enter access code nine four two dash eight four five dash five four nine where the public can join via computer at go to meeting dot com backslash join backslash nine four two eight four five five four nine the remote access information is posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join please also note that this meeting is being recorded by Auburn cable television uh, accordingly, those members of the Conservation Commission, employees and members of the public who participate, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, and please take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So for tonight's meeting, all supporting materials are available on the town's website, and the public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. Um, and we have some ground rules for the meeting to proceed. So before we turn to the first item on the agenda, permit me to cover uh, ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. <clears throat> so I, as chairman, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, um, I will go down the line of members, uh, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate um, minutes. Um, for any response, please wait until I, as chairman, yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. And if members wish to engage in discussion with other members, uh, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. So after members of the commission have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. Uh, I will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify themselves by their names and addresses only. And once we have a list of public commentators, uh, if we have one, I will each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. And uh, finally, each vote taken uh, in this meeting tonight will be conducted by a roll call vote. So having said that, the first item on tonight's agenda is, is a 7 p.m. public hearing. Alliance Environmental Group request to amend existing order conditions 
for periodic on-site vehicle washing activities at 33 Sword Street in Auburn. Is there a motion open? So moved. Tom? <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's a vote. Is there anyone here on behalf of the Alliance Environmental Group uh, making the request to amend the order of conditions? Um, I, I'm Tom Hefner. Um, I'm here on behalf of uh, Alliance Environmental Group, and uh, Norm Israel is also here okay. from um, FW Web, general manager for the uh, FW Web facility on Sword Street. Okay, very good. So if you would, uh, please um, uh, pres make a presentation or tell us what you want to do uh, at, the, at the site. Do you want me to start? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairman, um, and also board members. I'm Tom Hefner from uh, Alliance of Environmental Group, and I'm a registered uh, professional engineer in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and I wanted to thank you for having us on the uh, agenda tonight. Um, tonight, <coughs> we're here to uh, present on the FW Web facility on, uh, F uh, on uh, Sword Street in Auburn. And as you know, it's a long time um, business in uh, the town of Auburn. <coughs> Um, in the end of January, he uh, requested an amendment to the order of for periodic on-site vehicle washing. Um, we included a package that included drawings, the uh, proposed vehicle wash area, also photos of the conditions in the flow area, and included uh, a narrative. Um, a specific area of the site uh, was to be used, the rear area of the site, the northeast part of the site on the plans, which is near new um, stormwater infrastructure. Um, we have observed that uh, all overland flow in this area on the pavement would flow to the new catch basin that has an oil trap treatment with the HydroWorks five water quality unit, which is a state-of-the-art hydrodynamic separator it removes solid debris and um, lighted water pollutants such as oil. And this um, proposed wash activity would only happen once every two weeks. It would um, entail washing about five vehicles. We expect the flow would be less than um, 200 gallons. Um, we also had recommendations for monitoring the next, uh, during the next year and also maintenance as were, uh, required, and um, we feel that this meets as is a minor additional activity, which would require a simple amendment to the OOC under the uh, MassDP guidance document. Um, he also uh, copied the simple division of MassDP wetlands in um, accordance with the guidance document also. Um, some of the points that we wanted to make was, um, as previously mentioned, the wash water volume is expected to be less than 200 gallons, and um, the flow would be to the first stormwater um, structure on the plans identified as DCP2. If you flip back to um, C101, C100, please, and if you could scroll into that middle graphic, um, the, the middle one and kind of enlarge that area. Um, you can see the vehicle washing area and, and the flow from the proposed wash area would flow to that catch basin, which um, contains an oil trap and a four foot deep sump. And um, it's calculated to be approximately 376 gallons in total. And the stormwater from that structure would flow to the second stormwater structure, which is DMA, DMH free, and that's a 60-inch diameter, 800-gallon volume 
can handhold, it can change the microworks, uh, water quality unit. Uh, this um, 200 gallon wash water event with the volume of these structures would be adequately handled by the new stormwater infrastructure. We feel that the adequate residence time for wash water in the first stormwater structure to uh, be able to separate any uh, pollutants and the residence time in that structure is uh, a factor of two, you know, based on the 376 gallon volume and the um, 200 gallon wash water event, which would really be a lot of water for um, um, five vehicles. Um, we're also proposing that the board consider uh, additional inspections as part of the approval, as a, as a show of our good faith, that we feel this, this is going to work. Maybe at the beginning it would be more frequently, um, bi-weekly, to make sure that there was no breakthrough into the wetlands area, and any um, sediment or material accumulations would be mentioned and managed at, uh, for off-site removal as necessary. Um, we anticipate that the minimal uh, sediment removal management, we, we, we uh, excuse me, we anticipate that minimal sediment removal management will be required due to the size and the capability of the stormwater structures. And um, if immediate approval can't be granted to amending the water conditions, um, we would be interested in trying to demonstrate through monitoring measurement that the um, stormwater system is effective in removing um, pollutants. But in, in any event, that's essentially my presentation. We are requesting that the um, order of conditions be amended to um, include the vehicle washing. And um, this this request is uh, made as a minor additional activity under Mass DEP guidelines. OK, thank you. Um, so I have a few questions. What? Uh, what what would you wash um, the vehicles? I mean, is this you, you know, it's it, it, it's probably a it's probably a, uh, maybe Norm could answer this question. Yes, we would use a mobile wash company that also would put down um, you know catch catch pads, if you will. I think they're called. Um, that supposedly capture a certain percentage of, of the water also, which I mean, I'm not in that business, so I don't really know what the, those specs are, but I'm sure we could get them. I mean, is it is it strictly water, or are they use, also using a detergent of some kind to clean the vehicles? Um, it's a power wash um, system. I'm sure they they probably would have, um, you know, some brushing and stuff going on. I don't know if, if they'd use um, any chemicals in it, but... I think that's sort of an important... It's a power wash. That's an important uh, consideration, sir, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sure we, uh, we can get that information. Okay. And, and I'm curious, the, the vehicles that you want to wash, uh, what are they? Are they are these delivery vehicles uh, for your um, your products to customers, or what are these vehicles exactly? It, yes, they're uh, delivery trucks. They're um, we have two 24 foot box trucks, we have one 24 foot rack body truck, and then two pickup trucks. Okay. Um, Thank you. Um, Tom, you have any questions? Um, no. Pretty much the same considerations you have. I just like to know what chemicals they're going to use. All right. Um, does anyone else from uh, the board have any questions um, for either of these gentlemen? This is Allison Holmes. Hi, Allison. Hi, Allison. Hi, Allison. Hi, Allison. Hi, Allison. Why this location? Oh, sorry. Uh, like, um, why this location? Why, why in the buffer zone? What's the reasoning there? Well, uh, we, we were looking to use the uh, recently installed stormwater infrastructure. Uh, there was a problem with washing vehicles on the other side of the building where the, the flow was not able to be controlled um, in, in the area of the site. Um, because of the pitch of the pavement towards the catch basins, which was specifically designed as the um, stormwater improvements, um, all the water would be able to make it into these catch basins and be suitably um, treated. Um, if, if there were any 
pollutants, which we don't expect that there would be, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't make it into the wetlands. Um, we considered it the safest part of the site where we could capture. And as you heard, um, the general manager Norm mentioned, um, they're also <coughs> using um, pads to limit the flow and, and try to collect some of the flow in the areas where they're washing the trucks. Yeah, I mean, it seems unfortunate that it has to be within the buffer zone at all. Um, and I really strongly do not want any chemicals or soap or detergent or anything like that um, being introduced to the water there. That's just, you know, a very important detail. Um, that's all I guess I have. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, Nate, Nathan, do you have any comments or questions? No, I don't have any other questions. Okay, Patrick, anything? I just want to reiterate that I agree um, with uh, Allison, uh, the detergent, uh, as a major question, and also um, that the capacity um, for the stormwater, um, uh, the capacity for the stormwater um, infrastructure um, and with stormwater in mind. So adding extra flow on top of, you know, treating stormwater uh, could be an issue if there is detergents, um, even if you're only uh, expecting 200 gallons um, per watch. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, looking at um, the screen, I see that Mark Arnold is, um, is holding. So, and I know Mr. Arnold has appeared um, with regard to um, uh, to this project before. So Mr. Arnold, if you'd like to offer your comments, you have the floor, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, you, you hit uh, the two points that I was primarily concerned about, which was um, any samples that are used. Um, I do agree that this is the, if they were gonna wash vehicles on site, this is the best location because it has the optimal treatment, which is the catch basin and, and then the storm sector. Um, and the storm sector, I think, will 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 deal with any any type of um, floating oils and floating solids um, that could get in there. I think that definitely has the capacity. Um, but I, uh, my biggest concern is any type of uh, chemicals that were used with the washing, um, because uh, it, it's a direct discharge to the wetland. There's uh, if, if there's no um, if there's a discharge, it's going right into the wetlands. It doesn't go into a basin that could be cleaned out. Um, it goes right to the wetlands. And then uh, my my last comment. Um, is, is really kind of more towards the, the fact that um, there, there are a lot of off-site places where this can be done uh, in, a, in a better fashion, considering how close we are to the wetlands, it could be done off-site. But again, I think the location was definitely chosen um, best. I think the design works as long as the detergents aren't used and as long as the O&M is updated um, and recorded with the amended order, that way it's in the deed uh, how this is, how the monitoring is going to be taken care of, and also um, the confirmation that no detergents are going to be used because this detergent um, will be soluble, and that soluble uh, will, can't be the storm sector can't remove that. Um, but again, otherwise, if it's just straight water, I think it works um, as long as it's um, maintained right in the O and M, and that O and M is recorded with a deed just to keep uh, maintenance up. I think they they definitely show good faith in adding some additional inspection encourage commission to do. All right, thank you. Uh, if I could... Mike, if I could... Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, hi. <laughs> it's Michelle's issue. Um, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I just have a question for Tom. Tom, you said that they were going to be bringing it, or actually, I'm sorry, it's Norm. You said that they were going to be bringing in somebody who's going to be actually hosing them or high pressure hoses in, if they're going to be bringing in the high pressure hoses and they're going to be blowing that off of the trucks towards the wetlands, um, is there any concern that that could be, whether they're using chemicals or not, that that could be blown off of the truck into the wetlands by bypassing any of the catch basins? No? Maybe you can't. No? Okay. All right. I was just asking because I, I, I'm bad at proportion, so I, I couldn't necessarily see where the trucks would be. Some of those trucks sound pretty large. 
Um, I just didn't know how far it was going to be, if they were blowing it down or um, blowing it across. So, uh, Mr. Hebner, do you want to respond to Mr. Arnold's comments? Um, I, 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 I did, I did have a point about um, the offsite watching. We did try to explore that, and we um, almost had an agreement with the local truck wash, and then um, they backed out of the agreement. So we were not able to find, you know, a locally available uh, commercial wash to do this. Um, we did explore that before we made this um, submittal. Um, Ms. Arnold's um, comment about the, um, the soluble nature of detergent and the storm sets, step to, um, sure, that's, that's possible. Um, you know, it, it could make it through. Um, I guess I'd have to research that a little bit more. But uh, our understanding is this is just a general wash-off of the trucks, um, and there aren't any uh, chemicals and detergents that would be used. Well, I think we would like confirmation of that, sir. This is Allison. <clears throat> um, may I speak? Of course, please. Wait, sorry, I didn't know if I have to wait for you. Um, I just think it's hard to keep how, you know, how are all of the various people that come to wash your trucks going to know that you can't use chemicals here? I just feel like it's, it's asking for trouble with I don't know. I mean, we're not going to be inspecting this forever, and it just seems, in my opinion, like a bad idea to be encouraging this kind of thing right in the wetland um, without, like, some real assurance. Like, I don't know how we can make it really solid that, that it's only water and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, uh, Mr. Israelson, you thought you could contact uh, the company that you, the power washing company, you want to use, and you think you can get some some more detailed information concerning uh, what they use to clean your, or would use to clean your vehicles? Yes. Okay. So. Yes, certainly. Um, then my We used them before in, at 43 Short Street, and uh, we used them when we first, you know, were uh, getting ready to move, and then we found out we weren't allowed to do it. So, um, I, could, we'll, we'll, I can reach out to them and find out exactly what the pads do and what they use to wash the vehicles. I think that would be very helpful. I think it would um, yeah. it would address some of our concerns and also the uh, the uh, butter's concerns as well. So, um, having said that, sir, would you agree to continue this matter to our next meeting, which will be April fourteenth? Um, yes. Okay. Public comment. I, I see time walked away, but um, I can. You work for them, so you have the authority to continue. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Um, Ginger, do we have anything scheduled for the 14th? I have two new ones, but I can put them at the end of our stuff so we can start from fresh from. Okay. So, uh, sir, with your permission, uh, Mr. Israel Sinbull. We'll Public comment, please. Oh, I, I apologize. Public I, comment, please. I Thank you. I, could you please state your name and your address? Glenn Krovosky, 601 Main Street. Hello, Glenn. I didn't realize you were coming. Yes, I have a public comment on this. Please, proceed. Yes, I, I am only because I'm in, thank you very much, only because I was involved with truck wash uh, with DEP, with Fish and Wildlife, and uh, the effect on, in this case, of trunk fishery. But the point was, it was Imperial Mobile Wash, which is, before he died, was based out of Auburn. And he used to wash both at Mass 10 truck stop and other truck stops. And I realize this is a little bit smaller than a truck stop. But the point was, when he was washing at, at ProSource, which was in South Oxford, they both used a, uh, a product that cleaned the aluminum off. And it ended up causing chronic aluminum hydroxide in the trout and killed them as they quaked in the bottom of the brook until they died. And Fish and Wildlife and DEP both did testing on the flesh and the water quality, and that's where they came up with the chronic aluminum hydroxide because it, it did take some aluminum off 
the trucks as uh, part of the product as to make the trucks look clean was to clean that aluminum, which is around the rims, and that um, all the truck wash that was involved did involve a detergent, and my and that that was the issue. So I, I appreciate that the town and the conservation commission, excuse me, is looking at what type of nutrient loading might be coming off of this detergent, phosphate, nitrate, whatever they're using for wash, when it is only going through, as you stated. Uh, a system that's designed for colloidal and, and heavier silts to take out, but not to take that nutrient out before it enters into the wetland. And, and la one last point about that nutrient. I was the one that designed the depth of the detention structure at Walmart in Oxford. I, did the, I was the wetland consultant on that project. And it, for the nutrient just coming off of vehicles, which is something you should look, might look at, the uh, that dirt that you see in the snow during the winter along your highways as the snow starts melting is everything that's coming off of the vehicle and then sprays to the side a uh, new york study showed how much nutrient is actually on the road from the vehicles and the exhaust that pumps onto the road then goes into the onto the vehicles and again that's why that material is so black because it's lo the, the, what comes off a truck's period is nutrient and dirt, not just colloidals, but nutrient. So I thank you. And the last very point, because two projects I'm dealing with right now, we're testing water quality pre and post development. And if this thing goes through, I would say to, I would ask that there be a pre runoff during whatever storm event, half inch, one inch, of what's coming out at the very end of the existing system and then look at what comes off after this thing if it does go in as you're as they're proposing what the nutrient levels are when it comes out after the product the, the, the thing is operational thank you for your time all right thank you thank you so uh, mr israelson uh we have your uh, assent to continue this matter to april 14th at 7 p.m yes all right. Thank you, sir. Right. So, and if you could, between now and then, that's, um, you know, about three weeks, um, you could, if you can obtain that information and provide it to, uh, to Ms. Buta, that would be greatly appreciated. Could, could I add something, please? Uh, Mr. Hebner? Yes. What, uh, what one, of, one of my engineers... Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Oh. One of, one of our engineers that's still in the office um, was just part of me and some information. So this HydroGuard unit, this storm sensor unit, it actually removes metals, suspended stuff, and also nutrients, which includes detergents. So even though we're not supposed to be using detergents, if there was detergents, um, this this HydroGuard unit is supposed to be able to use them. Maybe if we're being continued to the next month, We'd be able to provide some limit, uh, literature to demonstrate that, and maybe we would have to do some testing further in the field if there were concerns. Uh, that would be great. Uh, if, if there's no other comment, uh, Mr. Israelson has agreed to continue the public hearing to April 14th at 7 p.m., and uh, as I indicated before, any information you want to submit to us, you can. Uh, uh, send to our um, our clerk, uh, Ms. Buto, um, at the town website. And I thank you for your participation this evening. Would we uh, are we going to be subject to uh, putting out a um, uh, public meeting uh, notification to all the abutters? No, sir. For the April fourteenth meeting? No, sir. You do not. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. That's great. All right. Um, the next matter on our agenda, it's actually four matters, um, is um, the no uh, notice of intent filed by EBT Environmental Consultants, Inc. for the construction of drive a driveway across a drainage ditch to construct single-family homes with utilities at the following addresses, 255 Prospect Street, 257 Prospect Street, 
259 Prospect Street and 261 Prospect Street. And I, I've grouped them together um, for a reason. Um, is there a motion open? So moved, Tom. Is there a second? I second, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's a aye. vote. All right, thank you. It's a vote. So, Mr. Kravosky, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir, the chairman and board. So, as, as you know, because you were there with us, we went out to um, the, the property location about two Saturdays ago. Uh, at that look at um, uh, an area of propo proposed replication. The reason um, I thought it prudent to, instead of going through each site one by one, is that the what you're requesting really applies to all four, four lots. Is that fair, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. So, again, we've, we've made, some of us have been to the site um, twice. Um, I think we have a good idea of, of, um, of the scope of work that is being proposed, and we know what the conditions are on site. Uh, do you have anything further to add, Mr. Kravosky? Uh, just briefly, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, if I can, thank you again. Sure. Uh, DP had, the, as you might have, thank you again. DP, uh, uh, Mr. Rabula, uh, an anal analyst from DP who issues, or uh, one of the one that one of the people that issues the final machine, did have a question about. I've uh, had two questions. One. When we had the signature on page nine of the notice of intent, we only used Walter Coza. He was convenient. Normally, if we have two owners, specifically, I think you can find this many times. If you have a husband and wife as an owner of a parcel, many times, only the husband signs, or maybe the wife signs. But we don't always need the husband and the wife to sign. So. But in this case, because we did have a, a coser and a pike, and we only had a coza, excuse me for just using last names to make it brief. That's fine. Uh, we, we use Mr. Coser, and I, maybe I'll say Mr. in front of that, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Coser, and, and then we didn't have Mr. Pike, and there was a question about having not the owner, which we had at least one of them. Uh, we ended up getting Mr. Pike to sign and date the signature page, so now we have uh, Mr. Coser and Mr. Pike. On the second matter, Mr. Rabula had a question about whether or not this site, these crossings needed to meet stream crossing standards. And on page seven of stream crossing standards, uh, well, we're not gonna pick on anybody because I can be picked on. He did uh, call out that, gee, this thing, because you're calling it a wetland in a, the, in a channel in a bank, where's the, potentially, where's the stormwater standards of, uh, being met? Well, on page seven, it specifies that if it's a drainage ditch for agriculture or if it's a ditch for draining water, storm drain drainage, they don't apply. So we did send that over to you, we addressed it to you, the commission, mm -hmm. and we cc'd Mr. Rabula. We haven't heard back, but we're sure, we're confident in the language of stream crossing standards that, that we're not applicable. The, the, the language is very clear. Mm -hmm. And it's also one of the stream crossing standards it alludes to the fact that there is no habitat in a drainage ditch, but it, it still makes it to be a wetland because of the old clause that I was around when it came in it's called routine maintenance of road drainage structures. And I, I'll be real brief on when it came in. It came in, and if I didn't say it the last time, because when DPWs were cleaning out sand, which was used a lot more before we have these new magnesium chlorides, it would, that the sand would clog up the drainage structures, and every now and then the towns would go in and clean them out. I think there was a gentleman named Mark from the DPW in your town that was uh, quite, quite proficient in doing it. And uh, then eventually DPWs got in trouble because the commission was going, you're digging in a weapon. Thing, like, a, like a drainage ditch, and we have some that look a lot more like wetlands than this one. Uh, then there was a question about were they exceeding uh, 5,000 square feet? There was no permits for them. So the DP made uh, a new limited project category called routine maintenance of road drainage structures at the time to cover that the fact that DPWs can clean these out, 
but they're still going to be called weapons. That's why this is in the regulation. So we called this drainage ditch a weapon because it had hydric soils and a few wetland plants along the edge to salve, but maybe a little bit of a spotted touch me not. But the soil was hydric because it was dug deep enough to get into the hydric soil. Uh, and, and, and so that's why we called it that. But that's all it is, is a drainage ditch, yes, called a wetland, but not no significant habitat along it. Um, and not even significant enough for three-sided culverts on the street crossing standards. We appreciate, again, the site inspection the commission had with, with myself and um, that we could look at the replication 400 square feet in an area that presently is black locusts, which is fact up the majority. And we showed you, I, I believe, the three and a half feet of road sand, some original historic farmer put in very long ago. The trees are of size. We chose this location lastly so that we weren't taking out much shade, but we are going to plant it just the same density as we normally would with three types of bushes and uh, one tr that grows into a tree, which is the red maple, and uh, seed it with the uh, uh, standard wetland conservation seed mix, everything out of New England wetland plants, make sure that we have that foot of organic. Uh, the reason I say that, because if we took this down, to the uh, A horizon that's buried three and a half feet down, we'd be subgraded and we turned it into a pond. So there's a whole question about how deep do you go? That's because of the depression of the organic material from the weight of the overburden or that fill on top. We will make sure that the wetland has one foot of uh, what we call organic material to the final elevation, and I will be there overseeing the replication, and it will be just an extension. And also, because it was brought up by uh, I, excuse my name. I, I know. I'm sorry. Lady Al Was it Allison? The lady that the consultant. Allison. Th thank you. We will take out the. Thank you very much. We will take out the organic material, the sands that are uh, where we're going to cross with swamp mats, and that little delta where it goes into the wetland that stream. We will take that down so that it. Um, so we don't have the delta there. If that helps to, that will help to drop out more silts in the future because there still is a little bit of sand, talking to Mr. Coyle a few years ago, that they used during some extreme cold situations that, that, that there was still a little bit of sand used in the winter, but not, not uh, anywhere near what used to be used. So we'll remove that and work with Mr. Bill Coyle on that, on that one. Okay. Very good. Um, Tom, but, any thank questions? you again. Thank you. Um, yeah, Glenn, um, did they issue a DEP number yet, file number, or are they still? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, with, Yes, when Mr. Rabula sent the DP file number, he had a he issued the number with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and there was one other you had mentioned you were going to do the um, estimated habitat of rare endangered species. Well, under, under the under stream crossing standard, that made it clear that this there is no habitat in a, a road drainage structure. Okay. Okay. And and that that was brought out because of Mr. Rabula and the question about stream crossing standards. Okay. So reading the full stream crossing standards, you'll see that they do not cl claim there is habitat within a road drainage structure. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any uh, uh, other questions from the board? Um, this is Allison. Yes. Go ahead, Allison. Um, I was just wondering, the um, the plan is it's kind of hard to tell, you know, you have here that's 270 feet to the west, or yes, I guess west. Um, is there was there consideration as to like putting the wetland closer to where the alteration is happening, and is this is this normal? You know, um, this when like it just seems like it's kind of far away from what we're you know we're taking away wetlands up here, and then. It just seems like we're not replicating them close to the to the alteration. If I if I could, thank you through the chairman. If sure. I could, thank you. Uh, on that clause of 1055-4B1 through 7, the 1 through 7, which it says that the replication area should be in close proximity to the lost area, the replication we've done replications with Phil Nato, Marianne DePinto, through Phil Nato. Uh, in the discussions on what is in close proximity. A thousand feet away at AD, across from ADT junkyard. If it's in the same drainage system, this is at the very end of that drainage system okay. that we're altering a, a channel that we're now calling has wetland on either bank. 
So in, in close proximity, we are in close proximity. We're well less than 1,000. And I hate to tell you, well, only because it might twist you a little bit. We did one on white that was on a superseding order at 2,500 feet away. And that passed through NATO, the Pinto at the time. So in the same drainage system, the whole premise they were saying was that in the same drainage system, you're cleaning up the water that the wetland would be doing in that drainage system. So we're clearly at the end of this drainage channel. That's where we're replicating. If we try to do it adjacent at each crossing, well, we'd be digging into an upland to give a little piece of wetland, what, a, what, 150 square feet or whatever, 89 square feet, I think, just, just round them off to 100 square feet apiece. A replication 100 square feet next to the driveway, each driveway, to us wouldn't make as much sense as to restoring some historically filled wetland at the end of our drainage channel, which is where this nutrient running off the road, as we just explained in the previous case, uh, that running off a road, yes, we, we want to clean that up if we can, and putting the replication area directly adjacent to where this channel discharges and cleaning the delta route will serve the purpose of cleaning up the nutrient that comes off of roadways where the existing wetlands don't do that because it runs straight down the channel and then it dumps into the wetland at the bottom. So I believe we're clearly meeting the spirit of uh, in close proximity uh, along with the other six performance standards that are found under that one through six, 1055 will be much for six. Okay, thanks, Glenn. I appreciate the explanation. Uh, thank you very much, Ellen. Uh, any other questions from members of the board? There being none, is there a motion to close? I make a motion we close the public hearing. Tom? Is there a second? This is Tony, and I second. Oh, hi, Tony. Nice to hear from you. Uh, is is there any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the motion carries. Uh, this hearing is, uh, public hearing is closed. Thank you, Mr. Kravosky. We will in all likelihood issue our order this evening. So uh, thank you for your participation. Thank you for your time, your, your free time on these things. Thank you so much, board, if, uh, chairman and board. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a 7.30 public hearing. Uh, Bill Coakley, a notice of intent to repair pavement at 754 Southbridge Street in Auburn. Is there a motion open? Tom. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Nathan. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's a vote. Uh, Mr. Andrade, are you present, sir? I am, thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, if I could, could I speak? Good evening. Could I screen share if possible so I can walk you through the provisions that we've made? Yes, please. If someone would just uh, allow me. Okay, we are in the process of allowing you. Hopefully. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, who wants to screen share? Mike. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Is that coffee? <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is my desktop, yes. All right. It gets me going in the morning. Um, all right. So, uh, as you know, um, uh, the, the commission had comments at the last meeting, as well as DP, um, that this redevelopment project, uh, redevelopment in terms of mass DP, is not a reduction, not an increase in impervious services. Um, do uh, make some efforts to do stormwater improvements, uh, improve existing conditions, and demonstrate compliance to the maximum extent practicable to certain stormwater standards. Um, at the site meeting a couple of Saturdays ago, we talked about how um, the um, drainage area, uh, drainage areas on the site kind of flow in three different directions. Um, so some of the driveway to West Street uh, sheets off uh, to the woods in that direction, 
portion of the parking lot in the driveway uh, in this direction uh, flows off to the, uh, the east. And uh, the bulk of the site, which I've kind of outlined here in blue, um, includes most of the parking area where most of the activity is and most of the roof drains to the rear of the property um, to this field and uh, back to the pond. So we focused on that area because the other two drainage areas is difficult to do any work um, and not practical because of the tree line. So being so close to the roadway, we'd be working within buffer zones and, and creating additional clearing and work that I don't think is really um, uh, desirable and unpractical. Practical. So what we've done is uh, we went on the site, did some soil augering to determine what kind of soil we had. Um, soils are actually pretty decent out there, B soil, sandy loams, loamy slash loamy sands. Um, we do feel that um, the groundwater is relatively shallow, probably within three to four feet of the ground surface, so it's difficult to do anything on the ground and maintain a separation uh, to do any recharge. So what we've done is design, and I'll zoom in here a bit, is um, this filtering rain garden um, off the back of the uh, parking lot. And uh, because we don't have, we don't expect to have a two foot offset from the bottom of this rain garden, um, this will have an under drain uh, at the bottom of the soil meter that will discharge out in the field um, some distance out. And we're going to plant that as a planting plan for uh, a couple trees, shrubs, and various plants. And the intent is that all the runoff from the parking lot that runs this way, and we're tweaking the grades a little bit to make sure that it gets here. Uh, as long as well as most of the roof in the building will flow through this uh, by retention area um, and then eventually overflow into the field and out the summer drain. So um, we're demonstrating that we're providing some uh, peak rate of runoff attenuation, um, some recharge in times where the groundwater table is lower, um, and um, demonstrating compliance to the maximum extent practicable, which is required for redevelopment projects. We've also included a, a stormwater a drainage system operation and maintenance plan and a long-term prevention, pollution prevention plan for the site. Um, so the Elks Club uh, will know how to maintain this feature um, and uh, practices associated with that. So uh, those are the changes that we've made. Um, I'm happy to take any questions if anyone has them. I just have one comment, Tom. Um, I like the fact that you have a wood guardrail where the rain garden is so that if people do go on the grass when they use it, because I know they do a lot of outdoor stuff, um, they won't drive through the middle of it, you know? Correct. That was a request of the owner because this, this is the area where they have a lot of activity, both in the parking lot and in the field. Sure. And we certainly didn't want anyone driving in or walk, even walking through that area. So mm -hmm. um, we did put a guardrail along the strip there. And from the field side, this is relatively shallow. They may end up coming in, putting in some landscape holders or whatnot mm -hmm. to kind of separate that from that side and leading that up. Um, but yeah, the, the guardrail is, it, it was intentional to separate that from the parking. Great. Um, I have no comments. Is there any plans? Go ahead, Allison. Oh, this is Michelle. I'm sorry. That's no, okay. Is, is there any? No, that's all right. Is there any plan for the snow? Where you, what you're going to do in the winter? Are you going to push them? I don't know for sure where they put it now. They probably push it to the edges of the parking lot. Um, we don't recommend that snow go in the rain garden um, and I think the O&M said that um, um, just for obvious reasons you don't want and sand and whatever may be in that snow to go directly to the rain garden um, so I know we haven't shown on the plan snow storage areas um, but I imagine like anywhere else it gets pushed with mo the most space so my, my suspect is most of the parking lot gets stored in this area here which, if, which when it melts, would, would flow into the rain garden anyway. The problem, though, is that um, well, what, what treatment, I'm sorry, what would occur if it flows into the rain garden, what would occur? Right. It would, well, the treatment would be through, um, and again, this is, this is a rain garden that's um, uh, designed as a filtering one, so it right. still provides uh, total suspended solids, removal, some attenuation. 
Um, and so any 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 water that gets in there, whether it's sheet runoff from the parking lot or snow uh, snow melt, would be would be treated the same. And and how often would um, I mean would the rain garden itself be cleaned out of any accumulated material from melting snow? Is this if this sediment that gets in there, yeah, that needs to be removed. Um, every uh, few years, I think uh, DEP recommends that you cha uh, swap out the um, the mulch that's the top surface layer, the filtering area, um, and obviously you got to maintain the plants that are in there as well. So that that's all part of the OM. I I see that. Okay. All right. I have no other questions. Um, do Do any other members of the board have any questions for Mr. Andre? Uh, this is Allison. Go ahead. Do you know if if salt or treated salt or treated sand used um, in the back of the parking lot there, close to the wetlands? I don't know what they use um, specifically. I'm, I'm just flipping to look at my pollution prevention plan and what we have in there. Looks like the hundred foot buffer zone is is pretty well outside the parking lot, so you're probably okay. It is it is far away. Um, yeah, the, the pollution prevention plan does recommend to um, um, use reduced um, all, or alternate, I should say, alter, alternative deicing compounds such as calcium chloride or uh, calcium. Okay, excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, any any other comments from the board? Uh, are there any comments from the public? There being none, is there a motion to close? I make a motion to close the public hearing, Tom. Is there a second? This is Ms. Bell, second. Okay, is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's a vote. All right, Andre, um, I hopefully um, we will get we will issue, be issuing an order this evening. So thank you, sir. Thank you all. Have a good night. All right, you too. Uh, the next matter on a public hearing, or for public hearing, is a 735 public hearing. Eastland Partners, a notice of intent to construct a subdivision at 50 and 190 Washington Street in Auburn. Is there a motion open? So moved, Tom. Is there a second? I'll second, Michelle. All right, thank you, Michelle. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Aye. A, very good. All right, it's a vote. Um, and on behalf of Eastland Partners, who wish to who wishes to start first? Uh, my name is Steve O'Connell from Turning Point Engineering. Uh, good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. If, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to uh, provide a uh, presentation. Go ahead. Great, thank you. Uh, so, this is a notice of intent uh, for a proposed subdivision uh, 50 and 190 Washington Street. Uh, the Commission should be familiar with 190, as has been the subject of recent permitting uh, with the Commission. Uh, going back uh, to last February, it was uh, issued an ORAD for the uh, wetland resource area delineation. Uh, and then back on November 20th, uh, 2020, the commission issued an order of conditions for what was uh, identified as a pad ready site plan. And what we had uh, presented at the time was uh, an earth moving project that would bring the earth from the back of the site uh, to the front of the site, and by doing that, would create uh, commercial, industrial development pad sites that could be marketed. Uh, this this built a market property when it needs the extent of, of earthwork that this property needed. Um, so uh, that process was, was very successful, and as you may have observed, uh, some of the work has erosion controls are installed and tree cutting. Uh, 
clearing has taken place and some stormwater uh, provisions according to the plan are, are underway. Uh, so that brings us to this current point in time in which um, as we had hoped and suspected the, uh, the phone is ringing, there's interest and what it's, what it's done is it's caused my client to uh, pursue a subdivision which would create uh, it's a three lot subdivision one of those lots is lot one on the plan uh, which is frontage along uh, Washington Street the other two lots are off the end of the cul-de-sac uh, which is 1485 feet long uh, and it is essentially in the alignment uh, as it was uh, for the pad ready site plan. The only exception being that the entrance of the subdivision road comes across the westerly portion of 50 Washington Street. So this page you're scrolling to is probably a great page to, to stop at. So you can see the proposed subdivision road uh, where, where, that, where that road comes off of Washington Street. That is a portion of 50 Washington Street, which makes 50 part of this application. Uh, not only not only is that part of the subdivision make this part of the application, but so does the proposed gravity sewer line, which is indicated by those dash lines running to east. And uh, what the creation of the uh, the right of way and the subdivision creates two lots. Uh, lot two and lot three, uh, both sides of the lots, uh, client has uh, an interested party in closing their business uh, on lot three. Uh, we've all had to sign non-disclosure agreements uh, at, at that business's request, which is not uncommon, but we can tell you that it is a distribution facility and it is not Amazon. So that's the question. Time. So as I started to say, the alignment of the road with the exception of the entrance uh, is, uh, is identical to what was approved by the Commission for the Pad Ready Site Plan. So uh, the crossing uh, where the bridges will be, will be constructed and then the second, which was all bank, and then the crossing uh, for the BDW and the associated replication is all identical. And we use those same details and, uh, and, and notes and information as part of this plan set, not with the intent that it's duplicate work, because you can't have two notices of intent uh, for the same project, uh, but to illustrate that, it, that it's the same. Uh, so this notice of intent application would be for all of the work uh, that is that deviates and different from the from the order of conditions granted by this commission for the the pad ready site plan for the earthwork that was that's underway. So the the, the project project will be serviced by town water, uh, and we're proposing also town sewer. That would be gravity, which would connect to the Winbrook Acres mobile uh, on the east side of. Uh, 50 Washington Street. The uh, road width will be 26 feet of pavement with a five foot sidewalk on one side. Uh, we have requested waivers from the planning board uh, to have no sidewalk. Well, our initial waiver is for just one sidewalk instead of two. Uh, but planning board meeting last night, uh, there was some indication that perhaps no sidewalk since it's an industrial subdivision uh, out to Route 20, which has no sidewalks. Uh, so there's some merit there to try to reduce impervious surfaces. Um, however, the stormwater system has been designed um, as such to accommodate uh, the sidewalk to be required. Uh, we've requested uh, some additional waivers by the planning board um, that don't necessarily impact the uh, Conservation Commission's review, but I wouldn't want to keep anything from the commission, so we've asked for you know no street trees since a good portion of the they will be in kind of a wooded setting. Um, what what may end up happening is we may end up putting the street trees in, or perhaps a reduced you know increased spacing, which would lead to a reduced quantity of street trees. The client's not a, not opposed, 
uh, but we're since those are things we're, we're reviewing with the planning board. Um, so stormwater is had been reviewed by Graves Engineering on behalf of the planning board, and uh, just as illustrated on the pattern site plan, uh, there will be uh, two primary stormwater uh, basins at the kind of handle the front part of the site, and then a stormwater basin uh, that will handle flows that are on the latter half of the roadway, uh, more towards the cul-de-sac. If we want to keep scrolling through the plans, we'll, uh, we'll come across that information that if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, so, you know, what, what is important to know for the commission is that any site development individual lots uh, that has work proposed in the buffer zone will require additional review. So this is a multi-layered, uh, you know, permitting process as as things develop in, in, in phases. Uh, as I stated, we've got the earth moving underway. This is a subdivision that will provide access to these lots that we're creating. And then any work on these lots, uh, that has work associated with the buffer zone, whether it's stormwater discharges or just construction, will require us to come back to the Conservation Commission for further approvals. So uh, with that information being presented, I thought uh, I think it'd be a good time to have some dialogue, uh, seek some input and comments from the Commission, and uh, happy, to, happy to address any comments you have. Well, uh, we do have some comments. Thank you, sir. So we uh, went out to the site this past Saturday, um, and uh, Caraccio, I think, was passing by in his truck, so he also uh, was kind enough to stop by. Uh, he indicated that um, uh, during the course of the work, um, he, he, made, he basically um, uh, took down or uh, disassembled uh, a beaver dam. Uh, that, and I think there was a concern, and, and certainly he can speak for himself, I know he's present tonight, that uh, there was a concern about flooding caused by the, the beaver dam. There was obvious uh, beaver activity, uh, you know, uh, gnawed trees and, and the like. The, the problem, uh, though, is that in Mr. Uh, by, by taking the beaver dam the way he did, he got permission from the Board of Health, and granted we're not the Board of Health, but uh, he, he needed to have um, applied to the Board of Health for a permit to do that. Now, we're not, um, uh, it, it is not m uh, my intention to, um, to really even comment on, on taking down the Beaver Dam because, frankly, it's not within our jurisdiction. However, uh, based on, um, on what we saw there, I do believe that the presence of, of obvious Beaver activity Bigger, um, the need for a wildlife habitat assessment. We know that there are beavers there. We have reason to believe that there's a lodge in that vicinity. And under our bylaw, we have the right to request a wildlife um, habitat assessment. And so that would be, um, that would be one, one thought of mine. Uh, the other thought is that, I mean, this is, this is a substantial project. It's, uh, as you indicated, it's multi-layered, requiring multiple permitting. And, I, and again, speaking only for myself, I think we would like to have this uh, peer-reviewed um, by our own uh, consultant. And, um, and again, we, are, um, um, we have that, the absolute right to do that. So um, that would be my thought uh, at this point. Um, and, and those are my comments. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if, if any other members of the board have comments. If you, please, um, please speak. Tell us what you think. This is Allison. Um, I'll go ahead. Um, I just want to um, thank you. Sorry. Um, I just want to agree with Mike that um, I think this should be peer reviewed. Um, just another set of eyes. It's a hard, you know, large site for us to really wrap our head around all the details here. Um, is it just one wetland filling area and one replication area? Yeah, so uh, it's the identical, I mean, the, the wetland filling for the BBW and replication is already approved. Uh, mission approved that 
in their order, issuance of their order of conditions uh, under DEP number 098820. So this subdivision utilizes though that, that permitted crossing. Um, so that, that is not part of this notice of intent application since already permitted, uh, but other aspects of the work which were not previously permitted are part of this application. Gotcha. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Okay, there being none. Um, so it ba basically my assessment is that um, and I don't think you were planning on, on having the public hearing closed this evening, but I think this matter does need, be, need to be continued. Um, is that, would you assent to a continuance to our meeting on April 14th? Yes, absolutely. I had no expectations. I know this, you know, this is a sizable project, uh, and uh, peer review is, is, you know, is a fairly common uh, requirement. So, you know, no objection. We're, we got nothing to hide. Uh, as I indicated, Graves Engineering did perform a peer review. Uh, we've got some peer review comments from DPW. Uh, so yeah, we would we would just. I, my only request is that the peer review, you know, just not have overlapping um, aspects, just to avoid redundancies and um, that that sort of thing. Uh, what would uh, what would how would the commission normally handle information from a peer review? Would you solicit some bids? Would you? You have a preferred reviewer that you go to, uh, just just so we can keep the ball rolling. Uh, I wouldn't want to wait and then, you know, I maybe, think maybe I, find out that process at all. I, I think our preference would be we. I mean, we use a couple of different uh, Welling consultants. Uh, I believe uh, a, a project like this, given as I think Ecotech would probably be the preferred um, peer reviewer. Sure. No objection from, from me. And then what I would also suggest is that, again, given the, the size of the project and there's some complexity there, that we actually continue the public hearing until our um, the meeting of April 28th. Would you agree with that? Well, um, what I would like to do is request it for the 14th because if there's some information that, that we may need to do with you, just uh, it would just give us that opportunity if you know we could keep it brief but if if we don't have that opportunity to seek your input on maybe one particular matter um we, you know we it's a loss of it's a two-week you know delay that i think could could be could be avoided um if if that's you know okay with you mr chairman uh, like i said it could be brief we, we could have nothing and you could keep keep your meeting moving but um it, it would be my request I, you know, I don't have an objection with that. I don't know, frankly, if uh, the peer review is going to be done in, in three weeks. My, my hunch is that it wouldn't be. In addition, I, as I, I think I was clear, I think we have a wild uh, life habitat assessment. Uh, and I think that's actually the, bur the burden under our bylaws on you to do that. So, um, sure. you know, in fact, I'll just... We will provide that. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm sorry. That, no, that's all right. So, um, Ginger, where can we put this on? What time? Um, we have seven ten. How yeah. about how about seven ten on uh, February? Uh, I'm sorry, April fourteenth. Check for public comment. That'd be that'd be great. We appreciate that. Public comment. Oh yeah. Um, before we close the uh, the hearing, continue the hearing. Is there any comment from the public uh, regarding this? Uh, this knows in a 10 application. Um, yes, my name is Barbara, and I represent Winbrook Acres. And I just want to make it clear on that sewer proposal they're showing, there is no agreement with Winbrook at this time for this to happen to tie into our line. And I just want the committee to understand that has not been agreed upon yet. Uh, okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, and, and I can I can corroborate that, Mr. Chairman. My, my client is in, uh, in discussion with uh, Barbara and her board at Winbrook, 
I, I, I don't I don't dispute that. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that 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 her statement is true. With uh, but there are there are ongoing discussions, and personally, I'm optimistic um, of, of of that connection. But it's certainly something that uh, is has not been finalized. Okay, and and ma'am, just so I I we're continuing the public hearing on this matter to April 14th at. Um, at 7 10 p.m. so I would encourage you at that time to log in and you'll have an opportunity to, to get a progress report okay hey thank you you're welcome yeah, yeah thank you you're welcome is there any other public comment through the chair if I may yes mr. Moody I just want to get some clarification on the peer review um, I think you indicated that you were looking for peer review of the entire project. I know that the applicant is before my office for an earth fill permit, um, with which includes engineering review, um, town engineer. Um, I think town engineer and myself both saw things that were questionable to us that we wanted wanted to have reviewed by by a peer reviewer, um, which may not fall under the. And they fall into both projects. So I just want the applicant to understand what the peer review was for. Is it for the entire project or just the subdivision application? I just don't want any. It, it seems that he's he's focusing on the subdivision and not not the pad ready site. Which was previously approved by the board. Right, I understand. I mean, my sense is that, um, you know, there are the prior approvals. I'm curious to see what impact um, there is based on uh, the submission of this notice of intent uh, for the subdivision. Uh, uh, my, my uh, and again, we don't want to be redundant here, but I think to the extent that um, there is overlap, I think we want our peer reviewer to uh, consider those issues. I, I appreciate that clarification. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, we are therefore agreed to continue the public hearing um, until 7:10 p.m. on April 14th of. 2021, uh, Mr. O'Connell, correct? Yeah, and I'm sorry to, to uh, continue talking, but is there anything um, that this commission needs from from me or Mr. Caraccio regarding the Beavers? I know you indicated it's not your jurisdiction. Uh, is, is are there aspects, you know, other than the wildlife habitat assessment, which which we'll we'll have done? Um, is there anything outstanding about the beavers? Do uh, I just, you know, while we're here, that's all I'm asking. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess the first thing is, if you see a beaver dam, and you want to do something, uh, apply to the Board of Health first, and uh, and and actually the best thing oh, yeah. is, is not to do anything. So, um, uh, you know, I think leave things status quo for the time being, and um, and we'll see how, you know, we'll we'll do the peer assessment. You will obtain someone to do the wildlife habitat assessment, and uh, we'll reconvene on February on April 14th. Okay. Okay, that's not fine. And you, you, uh, you, you should know, Mr. Chairman and other board members, that uh, there is no desire or or need, uh, you know, for for us or the contractor uh, to to do anything with the beavers. Um, you know. I don't think we're seeking uh, anybody seeking on any trapping or, or beaver dam removal. Uh, you know, they don't present uh, a threat, you know, to the property at this point in time. They're certainly active out there, so just so it's clear that I don't think we're seeking anything at this point. I think uh, perhaps what Mr. Crotchu had done, um, you know, was certainly certainly not of bad intention. Um, so, but just just to be clear, we're not seeking to do anything with the beavers. With search, so we certainly will not touch anything. Uh, we have no need. All right, very good. To the, to the chair, if I could just comment on that on behalf of the board of health. Uh, uh, Mr. B Mr. Moody has some other comments. Please go ahead. So, Mr. O'Connell, just so we're clear, um, under, understand that you're not seeking to remove any further beaver habitat. Um, but it was reported to us that beaver habitat was removed without a permit. So that's why we're seeking the, I think that's one of the major reasons we're seeking the wildlife assessment is to see what took place on site and how, how it can be repaired. Yeah, but that's fine. I'm sure the assessment will reveal that. 
Um, I'm sure the Beavers will take care of the children. As you know, as as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, as I've looked at it a couple times over the last few days, um, it's hard for me to even tell where um, you know where the disruption occurred because uh, that's just the nature of, of the Beavers. You know, busy as a beaver is the phrase that it is. Uh, but yep, we will we will uh, have that wildlife assessment uh, completed and um, you know move forward. All right, very good, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may. And this would be who? This would be who? Bill Caraccio, supervisor. Mr. Caraccio, good evening, sir. Um, good evening. I want to apologize again. I really didn't think I was doing anything wrong out there when I was there. I did not think I needed a permit. As I said the other day with you in the field, um, you know, I, to me, I just I moved a couple sticks. <laughs> you know, I mean, you've seen what was there. I can, um, I apologize. It's turned into what it has for you, your your group. And um, again, there was no malice thought of, and I I apologize. No, it's fine. I didn't think you had angry intent towards beavers, sir. So, but uh, you know, the law is the law, and we you know do our best to follow it. So, I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up that. Um, you know, having done further research after, you know, making the site walk on, on Saturday, this is what we concluded. So we will, uh, we will move forward from here. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. I got sorry. This is Allison. I, hopefully this will be the last question. But um, sure. was the sewer line easement already approved? Was that also part of the stuff that was already approved not beforehand? By, not by us. It or is that not. part of what we're talking about? Nope, it is not. It's part of this application. Can you clarify just that there's no wetland disturbance and why it's in the buffer zone? If there was any reason we could have moved it out of the buffer zone more or any more thoughts on that just for my... Sure. Um, perhaps it would be best to go to a plan later in the, uh, in the plan set uh, towards the end. Yeah, so there are... There are proposed uh, temporary alterations uh, just for the installation of the sewer main. Uh, there are two uh, in relatively small uh, temporary crossings. And uh, the reason it is where it is uh, is twofold. One is for it to be able to be gravity sewer. It's always preferable for uh, to have gravity sewer line. Yep, if you keep going. It'll be after those sheets. What, what's the page number? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good sheet right there. Yep, that's the sheet right there. That's a good sheet. So we have to be, we're also going through a million power company easement. Uh, their, their strict requirements uh, when you're going through a, a New England power company easement and you are seeking their, you know, an assent agreement, they call it, is that you be perfect. Um, so we generally comply with their uh, their requirement uh, to be perpendicular. This location is between, you know, not proximate to uh, their infrastructure, their towers. So this location uh, was suitable to them. And uh, also, I said for the sewer to be gravity from the subdivision all the way to its proposed connection point. And not that it was uh, critical, but in order for it to be gravity at this, you know, minimum designed uh, acceptable sewer slope, uh, it had to be at, the, at, at this location due to the topography on the 50 Washington Street property. Uh, that property also slopes pretty severely down from the Route 20 road elevation uh, down to the wetland resource area. So uh, we stay out of the foot buffer once we're through crossings and at the kind of at the toe of the slope uh, to the proposed point of connection at the Windbrook uh, mobile home park. And if there's no agreement established with the mobile home park, an alternative or is there, it? Or? Yep, there would be some alternative that, you know, would require um, some, you know, some significant alternative um, analysis, you know, impacts. 
yep, analysis and impacts. Um, it would require pump stations, uh, you know, significant work, you know, in and along Washington Street. Um, could be pumped up to existing town sewer uh, that runs up towards Tuck Hill Farm, uh, up, you know, to the Packard property, you know, with, with, you know, large areas of disturbance and multiple wetland resource area, you know, disturbances and buffer zone disturbances. And so um, we, we thought given all of those uh, opportunities that this would, uh, you know, certainly was on the short list of reasonable options. Necessary disturbance, meaning that it would be restored after it's that's installed? Correct. Yep, that's correct. But there's no, like, plan for that specifically in this plan set? Uh, if you're looking for, like, like a planting plan, yeah, like then what you're going to plan or stuff like that, or we're not looking at There, uh, sheet number 7.3, you know, shows a plan and profile. Um, if you're looking for a planting plan, I have not prepared one of those, uh, but I'd be happy to as part of uh, you know the, the restoration. I was just wondering. I mean, the plan is to restore it, and that's good to know. It is good. Is there elevation changes to the topography? I was having a hard time understanding this cross-country sewer profile plan. Are you filling in to make it level? Uh, there's there'll be a, some some mounding of, of soil over the top of the pipe to maintain you know uh, standard oh right yeah standards for pipe cover yeah okay that's all I have thank you I appreciate it yeah thanks for your comments thank you are there any other comments. Uh, there being none, um, by agreement, the hearing is continued to April 14th at 7, 10 p.m. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for, uh, for you know, uh, answering our questions, and uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Good night. The next item on our agenda is um, 47 Washington Street, Whispering Pines. So a, a request for a certificate of compliance had been um, had been filed. We uh, walked uh, that property uh, a few weeks ago, and of course, uh, whatever work was done there was done a very long time ago. Uh, we did walk the site. Um, there, there, we did in fact uh, eventually find a wetland area behind where the park is. Uh, there, um, there does not appear to be. Any uh, and uh, impingement on the wetlands, any uh, it appears that the site has been stable for many, many years. Um, so, you know, we had no plans. Um, it, it did appear, at least from our view, that um, that the, the request for the certificate of compliance should be granted. So, is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we issue a certificate of compliance based on our observations from the site visit on Saturday, March 20th, last weekend. For 47 Washington Street? 47 Washington Street, yes, sir. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Aye. All right. It's a vote. Um, we have um, some orders and conditions to issue. So, for um, my suggestion for um, the the four lots on at, at locating on Prospect Street is that I I mean my own opinion I'm more than happy to discuss this is that the order of conditions that we issue for one of the lots will probably be applicable to all of the lots. They all require um, uh, the the, uh, the drainage ditch crossings or the road drainage ditch crossings. They will all require um, uh, the issuance of a waiver because the work is being done within 25 uh, uh, feet of the buffer zone. So, um, is there a motion 
uh, to issue an order conditions for the lots located at 255, 257, 259, and 261 Prospect Street. I make a motion, um, so moved, um, to 255, 257, 259, and 261, and at the same time, um, make a motion to approve the waiver of the 25-foot buffer. Okay, and with respect to our special conditions? In the special conditions, it will be a standard order plus the following special conditions. Uh, number one, number two, number three, number four, number six, mm -hmm. uh, number eight, okay. number nine, yep. um, no estimated habitat, okay, uh, number 11, okay. Number 12, right. don't believe there was any detention or retention. And number 14, the DEP sign. Okay. Um, so, again, the motion was standard order plus one, two, three, four, six, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, and 14. Is there a second? Second that, this is Al. Allison, is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's a vote. And again, just it's understood that um, although the lots were submitted to us as separate applications for no that the order of conditions that we are in uh, this evening will be applicable for each of the four lots. Okay, um, for um, 754 Southbridge Street, which is the Elks property, is there a motion? Make a motion we issue an order of conditions for 754 Southbridge Street, standard order plus the following special condition. Um, number two, number three, Number five, number eight, um, number nine. Can number, I make a sure. suggestion not to cut you off, but for number nine, mm -hmm. uh, I would amend it just to say there shall be no storage of snow within, within the 100 buffer zone of the rain garden. To the rain garden. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. You, uh, go ahead. Yep. Um, and then number 11, number 12. And number 14, I guess. I don't know that there's... I don't even know if there's going to be a DP. Yeah, all right, so number 12. Okay. All right, so again, standard order plus 1, 2, 3, uh, 5, uh, 8, 9, with the modification that there will be no storage within a 100-foot buffer zone to the rain garden, uh, number 11, and number 12. Is there uh, a second? So oh, okay. okay. Um, who should I give it to? Should I give it to Allison or Michelle? Allison. All right. I'll give it to you this time. Uh, is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. It's a vote. All right. And then. Um, Hold up from last time we didn't have a quorum. Oh, that's correct. So um, we also have the meeting minutes from October 14th. We did not have a quorum to consider those meeting minutes, and this evening we do. Uh, I reviewed these meeting minutes, and um, I thought they were impeccably done. Thank you, Ms. Buto. But does anyone have any uh, changes or amendments to the uh, meeting minutes of October 14th? No. All right. There being none, is there a motion? Motion we accept the meeting minutes of just have them, right? <laughs> October 14th. October 14th. All right. Is there, a, is there a second? Is there a second? This one. Uh, thank you, Michelle. All right. Is there any discussion? 
Uh, there being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I'd like to abstain. I was not at the meeting. Okay, very good. All right, it's a vote. Okay, um, we will see you on April 14th of 2021. Uh, we have no sidewalks this weekend. And um, uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion we adjourn the public hearing. Is there uh, our meeting? Is there, okay. a, is there a second? I'll second the motion. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Now I can tell Aye. you, enjoy uh, you know, the next three weeks, and we will see you on April 14th. Good night. Good night.